On February 11th, 2014, I started my own YouTube channel to showcase some of the Game Maker games I had been working on. It wasn't my first attempt at a YouTube channel, but it was the first channel I actually posted somewhat more regularly on. My first video was released that same day, and it was about a 3D racing game I made in Game Maker 8. In this video, I thought it would be a fun experience to try and recreate that video in Game Maker Studio 2, and then try to apply all the things I learned since then. I've learned a lot about shaders, 3D modeling, sound design, and lighting, and there's so much more to learn. So in this video, I'm going to remake my first video and try to improve it in every way. Until 2017, all 3D models I used in my games were made by me using Model Creator version 5 by Matrabatra. In 2017, I switched over to Blender. First of all, I needed to create a more high-definition model for the car I used in my first video. And the car in question was a 2006 Lamborghini Murcielago, one of my all-time favorite cars. The first thing I did was look up a blueprint for the car and some reference images. For the reference images, I used a little program called PureRef, which is a great and free tool that allows you to place multiple reference images in a single window. Cars are, in my personal opinion, some of the most difficult objects to model in 3D. There are a lot of little details that are very hard to spot without a blueprint, and simply eyeballing it could cause proportions to look off, which could be very noticeable. So what I do is simply try and trace all the lines shown in the blueprint to get the proportions right. I really want to emphasize the importance of looking at reference images for every part you are going to recreate in 3D. The blueprint will give you a great high-level understanding of what the car looks like, but to really understand what the car actually looks like, it is extremely important to keep looking at those reference images. My Lamborghini is far from perfect and it doesn't have an interior and some details that may look off to you, but I am definitely happy with it for now because it's the best I've ever done. For the license plate, I simply took a picture of my own license plate bonus points if you know what car I have. So all that is left to do is export the model as a vertex buffer and load it into GameMaker. And for this setup I export the vertex buffer with the following vertex attributes. I export the position of each vertex, the normal orientation, some vertex color data, the UV map, and the tangents which are going to be very important later. So now to load this model into GameMaker I used a few custom scripts to load the vertex buffers from a file. Then to actually draw it I used the following method. I first set up a 3D camera in Game Maker at the X and Y position of the player object. I then draw the car in the player's position as well. Now since I want the camera to be behind the car at all times, I use Game Maker's length derf functions to place the camera behind the car, and this is very useful because the camera will stay behind the car at all times, giving us the perspective that we're looking for. Before I run the game, I'm going to add a skybox. I also want to get some color information for the lighting from this skybox, much like an HDR. So my approach was to create a separate surface at the start of the game with skybox texture drawn on it. I then take 5 samples from the surface using surface get pixel. In the shader that I'm writing I then use this color information to light all sides of every 3D model in the scene. So in GameMaker it will look something like this, before applying the lighting from the sky and after. It looks a lot better. Now I also want to add some cube map reflections to the car as well. But since I haven't really figured out how to use them effectively, and I can't really figure out how to do HDR reflections either, I settled with a simple method that works okay-ish. The shader also takes in three other arguments, which are the car's paint RGB values. This allows the player to change the color of the car with ease. Now remember when I said I wanted to export the model's tangents as well to the car's vertex buffer? That was done to add normal maps to the model. I wanted the car to look a bit more interesting than it does right now. The reflections are perfectly smooth and there isn't really that much going on with them. So I wanted to add raindrops to the car to make it look more interesting. For this I created a normal map. In order to make a normal map you need to start with a blue purpley base texture and then add some raindrops on top in my case. You can then use this texture in GameMaker to get additional normal information for every fragment if that makes any sense. Simply pasting the normal map on top of the car looks like this, very hypnotizing indeed. But converting the RGB values of this texture to normal information will yield the following result. Cool little raindrops and the entire project is in the description below if you'd like to know how it actually works. The next topic I'd like to talk about is sound design. The Lamborghini in my first video used a single sample, albeit an actual Lamborghini sample at least, to mimic the sound of the Murcielago 6.5 liter V12 engine. For this project however I want to use three different samples, one for the lower RPM range, the mid RPM range and the higher RPM range. 
There is also a fourth sample which is just a higher RPM sample modified in FL Studio, so it sounds like the car is over revving. Now in GameMaker I simply interpolate between these three RPM ranges and increase the pitch value of these three samples based on the RPM value, which will make it sound like this. The original version of my racing game took place in a flat Need for Speed Carbon styled world. I really love Need for Speed Carbon, I even called the project Carbon back then apparently. Need for Speed Carbon also takes place in a number of canyons, which I thought would be interesting to implement as well. To do this I created a winding road in Blender using a NURBS path and apply some road geometry to it. I then export this model as a vertex buffer as well and load it into GameMaker. To make sure the player can actually drive on the road, I use Snitter's Coal Mesh once again to calculate the height of the player on the road. To do this, I created an array of four elements, each element representing a tire. Each tire will then perform a raycast to check the height of the road underneath the tire. I then calculate the height difference between the wheels and then use an inverse tangent function to calculate the angle between the two points. This will allow me to rotate the car's body so it seems to drive on the terrain. Then lastly I take the average of the four tires heights and use that to place the car on the terrain, which looks like this. For driving physics they are very, very basic. The car goes forward, backwards and steers left and right. It is possible to drift but that doesn't really work all that well. For this I would love to use 3D physics but I've never actually worked with them before so I just kinda left it for now. The last thing I wanted to do was to make the game look more interesting. I added the PBR shaders I made for the car to the road and created some props in Blender, such as guardrails, traffic signs, trees and rocks. I then created a very simple room editor to place these props around the map. You can then save these props very easily using the F5 key on your keyboard. The last thing to do now was to add a little cinematic opening and have the game take place at night like in the original. The full project can be downloaded in the description below, hopefully you'll find it useful. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will hopefully see you in the next video.